Hi, I'm Zachary Singerman, and welcome to the Gen Z Jews Learning from Leaders series. In this series, I'm interviewing national leaders on the topics of anti-Semitism, Israel, and leadership. Today, our guest is Professor Cheryl Greenberg. Professor Greenberg is a distinguished professor of history at Trinity College who focuses on African-American history and race relations. She also has an extensive nonprofit and civic work on diversity, civil rights, equity, education, and race relations. She is also the author of Troubling Waters, Black Jewish Relations in the American Century. Professor Greenberg, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. So could you just give a brief overview uh, of your book on Black and Jewish relations and what prompted you to write it? Sure, although I'll answer them in reverse order. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a professor of African American history. That's what I teach, as you said, and that's what I study. Um, but with a last name like Greenberg, I tend to get invited by Jewish groups who are looking for a speaker for their bagel brunch or whatever. Um, so when I first came to town, people called me and said, oh, would you come speak at such and such? And I'd say, sure. And they'd say, well, what's your field? And I'd say, black history. And then there'd be the silence. And then they'd say, would you come and speak to us about Minister Farrakhan? I don't know anything about Mr. Far Minister Farrakhan. I'm a historian, right? I, I don't do that sort of stuff. So I had no answer. But I got enough of those questions that I thought, you know what? I really better figure out what's going on. Um, and what I found was that when I talked to Jewish audiences, there was a difference in response by um, generation. It's interesting that you're, you call yourself the Generation Z Jews. The older folks, and again, this is in the 80s, so they're really old now. Um, if they talked about Black Jewish relations, oh, we were together, we marched arm in arm, we loved them, they loved us, we're all one big happy family. The folks who were sort of, should pardon the expression, middle aged, right, right in the middle, said, why do they hate us so much? And younger Jews would say, what Black Jewish relationship? So I knew that things that were interesting to one group or important to one group were not translating to another. And so I thought it was time to investigate. And since I'm a historian, I tried to trace the history of um, Black Jewish relations through, um, through the 20th century. So that's what led me to the book. Um, a brief overview, I guess, um, would be, uh, first of all, that when we say black Jewish relations, people always mean black, white Jewish relations. There are many Jews of color who didn't need any persuading to get involved in the civil rights movement, right? Because mm -hmm. they were there. But um, it's not just that white Jews needed more persuading, it's also that white Jews ran all the organizations. So uh, if we're talking about Jewish organizations getting involved, these are all white people. They're, they're calling the bills Jews. But the fact is that they're white and that will be relevant, I promise. Um, so I just wanted to, to mention that. Um, but the, basically what I try to argue is that the, the civil rights movement, both the leadership and the activists relied on black people, of course, and their white al and other allies. And the largest contingent of white allies were Jewish. And so, I asked the question, why is that? And at the same time, was it as wonderful as those older folks are, are telling us? Um, and uh, what I discovered, or at least what I argue, is that Jews got involved in civil rights because they recognized that anti-Semitism was always close by. And if anybody wasn't safe, Jews were not going to be safe. And so for it's certainly religious, but political reasons, in a way, Jews sought in their self-interest to get involved in civil rights, to make sure that things were equal for everybody, um, to protect themselves, and because they recognized, you know, this this unfairness in, in other groups. Um, and so Jews joined in this effort. They helped write legal briefs. They pressed to desegregate everything from medical associations to bowling leagues, um, they lobbied for legislation. Jewish activists joined the ranks of SNCC and CORE, and they were, were on the Freedom Rides, right? So they, they were participating in every level of engagement. 
Uh, and again, they were far greater than their proportion in the white community would suggest. And that's, you know, as a Jewish person, I'm tremendously proud of that. That's a real engagement and a real contribution that many, many Jews made to civil rights. At the same time, however, there were tremendous tensions between the two communities, in part because Jews were white people. We don't think of ourselves as white people, but in terms of American society, we certainly are. And so we Jews owned the buildings where black people lived. We were the teachers and the social workers that black people were kids were relying on. Um, we owned the stores in black neighborhoods. So any tension over class or anything like that turned into black Jewish ish, right, tension. And that was really never resolved. So it became written as a black Jewish issue, right? At the same time that blacks and Jews are celebrating how wonderful they're all getting along. And it also was relevant because by not recognizing their whiteness, Jews thought, well, we're on the same playing field. So just work like we did and it'll all be fine. So in other words, they were a little more paternalistic than they might have been otherwise. Um, they kept saying things like, slow down, slow down, you'll get there, just do what we did, not really taking into consideration the kinds of structural barriers that Black people faced. I obviously go into way more detail on being superficial here, but, um, and so those kinds of issues, Jewish people acting like they were running the show, for example, um, and these other economic tensions turn into um, tremendous friction between the two groups. And as I said, they're not really addressed. So as the civil rights movement calms down in the 70s, or at least shifts, it's only the tensions that are left. And that's when we see this explosion of, oh my God, they hate us. When the tensions aren't new, they're just what we see. So um, what I do in the book is try to trace that to talk both about why Jews got involved and how to reclaim that effort and what got the, um, the group, the coalition into trouble so that we can rethink the problems that we had and maybe come to a better uh, approach next time. And why is it so important for Jews and African Americans to learn about the relationship between our two groups? Uh, I, I do think it's really important, actually. I think um, it's important because because if we, if we Jews want to engage with civil rights and justice issues, um, we need to know how we did it last time and what to avoid this time. So, for example, this idea that many Jews joined because we were slaves in the land of Egypt, we understand that when anybody is risk, at risk, we're all at risk. That's a kind of spacious understanding of self-interest, which is incredibly important and powerful. Other Jewish, uh, other white groups were busy saying, no, 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 we don't want to be seen with black people. That's too dangerous. But Jews said, no, we see our interest as fighting for justice. And I think to the extent that we can reclaim that argument um, and energize more Jews to get involved, that would be good. Same for the African-American community. If they can understand um, what went right and what went wrong with their Jewish colleagues, they can also return to a more productive alliance um, or coalition with Jews and other people, obviously, and figure out how to maneuver in the future, because in fact, Jews were incredibly helpful in many ways. And so um, to the extent that you want to build alliances, it's a very important issue to engage. And on what you were saying, like, about Jews, like saying, well, we were slaves in the land of Egypt, we know that you do need it, like, we want to help. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it was also, like, a big reason that Jews also, like, supported in the civil rights movement was because the Holocaust happened, like, two decades before? Absolutely, except they were doing it, um, they were doing it even at the time. Um, the, ho the Holocaust was only the absolute most horrific version of what what Jews had always faced. There were pogroms. There, were, there was lots of recognition in the Jewish community that what Jews were facing in Europe 
was very similar to what black people were facing here. You see it in the Yiddish press in the 19 teens, right? These conversations about black lynchings, which they call pogroms. So there is an, uh, an awareness that sort of, you know, um, that they are who we were or who we were in this other, in this other place. And certainly the Holocaust then shows you the dangers of not attacking things when they're, um, when they're not before they are uh, genocidal. Mm-hmm. Um, so absolutely the problem, or I should say the challenge of understanding it that way is that it implied, and this is how I learned my Judaism certainly was it was a Jewish value, right? Of course we were historically, we were slaves in the land of Egypt. We must look out for the, for the poor and the disadvantaged disadvantaged. The problem is, where were Jews during the abolitionist movement, for example? We just don't see lots of Jews in other activist movements for equality. So there's something more than just our religion. If it was just our religion, why is it that reform and uh, non-synagogued Jews are much more often participating than, say, Orthodox Jews? It's not just religion. So it's a particular way of thinking about or understanding our religion um, that I think is really key to understand how to move forward if that's what we want to do in this kind of coalition work. What do you think the Jewish community today can do to support the African-American community through all the hard racism that we see today? It's a great question. And I will answer as a historian, which is look to the history. Um, There are so many Jews who are saying, how can I get involved? This is important. What can I do? And yet we're not asking the hard questions about our own participation. So if, um, if we simply go back and recreate what we had, we're going to run into the same kinds of tensions. And in fact, more so because the awareness of things like class differences and and paternalism is even stronger. So I have to say that I think that what Jews can do is um, look honestly at our, that is white Jews, whiteness. Because the fact is we benefit from whiteness and we benefit from all the opportunities that white people are given. And we benefit from the structures that are racist, but that we get to to participate in. And if we don't understand our own role in that, we can't effectively dismantle it. And we can't effectively deal with allies when we're coming in like, oh, we're all the same, we're all, right? Um, And so I think one thing that Jews have to, white Jews have to do is confront the fact that they're white. We spend all our time saying, oh, we were slaves, oh, we're vulnerable, but we don't take responsibility for the ways in which we have power. And that's, I think, very important. Uh, And I think the second thing that we could do is um, be a little humble about what we can do. It is not our role to run this, this effort. It is not our role to say what needs to be done. It is our role essentially to say, how can we help you? And to come in with that kind of attitude is difficult when you're used to being in control because we're white people, right? whatever. So that a certain kind of um, self-awareness that is not, um, it, I'll be candid here. Um, I think that many Jews that I talk to see black Jewish relations or Jewish engagement in civil rights as a kind of quid pro quo we did this for you, you owe us that. And honestly, I think that's an incredibly dangerous place to start because it's not about what we want. It's about what they want. Um, And by they, I mean disadvantaged communities. So I'll give you a concrete example that you may have heard yourself. People will say, Jews will say to me, I can't support Black Lives Matter until they repudiate Farrakhan. And as if, first of all, Jews have the right to decide what Black Lives Matter is going to do, right? And as if we are equal players and get to decide. The point is, 
it's not on them. It's sorry. It is not on them to bow to our needs. If you support the agenda of Black Lives Matter, you want to support the agenda of Black Lives Matter and work for it. If you are so horrified at this group that they could possibly talk about Farrakhan in positive terms, then don't help them. But it's about what they're doing, not your judgment. And so they'll say, well, if you don't do this, I can't do that. It's not that kind of it's not that kind of story, right? It is a struggle for justice, it seems to me. And either we're in it or we're not in it. We can deal with the anti-Semitism that's it, that's there. We can deal with all those contradictions. It's not that we have to just roll over and say, oh, we don't mind if people hate us. But that's not what Black Lives Matter is about or whatever, however you're going to term the, the current um, thing. So I think, again, I think Jews have to come, white Jews have to come to grips with the fact that we are white. So many Jews say, well, we're not white, right? White people have tried to kill us. And in that sense, we're not white. But as far as American society is concerned, we are white people. And we have to take some responsibility and think carefully through what that implies in terms of what we can contribute. And, it's a very long answer. And you've been talking a lot about like about uh, white Jews. What about Jews of color? How does that change for them? It's a great question. And actually, that's the other thing that Jews can do. Um, I think that it is the unwillingness of white Jews to acknowledge that there are Jews of color that got us into this problem to begin with. If the Jewish community had truly been equal and welcoming all along, we would have encountered those challenges already and known how to deal with them. The fact that all those organizations were largely, were exclusively white. The fact that we don't talk about the history of Jews of color. Um, you know, when I was growing up, the only Jew of color I had ever heard of was Sammy Days Jr., right? Because he was such a standout person. So the, the unwillingness to deal with our own racism um, by arguing essentially that Jews are white, even though I'm saying, you know, um, is, is it, was itself a problem. And so um, I've actually been impressed increasingly at the number of communities, synagogues, groups like that, that are thinking about sort of introspectively figuring out how can we better welcome Jews of color? How can we better incorporate their view into our larger community view? And that itself involves recognizing whiteness and its limitations. And so um, I think it's all part of the same thing. Jews of color are something like 20% of the Jewish community in the United States. And as long as we write them out or see them as marginalized, we're never going to get to the root of the problem within our community, much less within the country. And is there anything else that you'd like to say to Gen Z to wrap us up? Yes, actually, I would. Um, I'm a professor, and so I have seen many, many incarnations of students. And what really impresses me about this particular generation is your willingness to envision a truly radically equal future to think about justice issues in a deep kind of way, not superficially, but what would it really look like if we were just, and to not close off answers because, you know, it's socialist or it's whatever, right? That you guys seem to me to be truly committed to asking those hard questions and envisioning possibilities um, and working towards real change. and. I have to say, after waiting a long time <laughs> to see that, I am so heartened by that willingness. It is a, it by and large, again, these are Jews and non-Jews, but certainly the, um, in the Jewish community too, who are saying, I really, we need to fix this. And who recognize these issues and are willing to engage and willing to ask difficult questions and willing to go there. And I just wanna say to you all, not only bravo, but thank goodness, Right. Keep it up. Keep asking those hard questions. Keep envisioning what's possible instead of giving up, because you guys are the, the possibilities. You are the future of this kind of the, the, the nation, the world. And if we don't sort this out, we're going to be in big trouble. And I really think that your generation has particularly established itself as 
that kind of justice seeking group. So I just urge you to keep it up. Well, thank you so much, Professor Greenberg, for being here today. My pleasure. I hope you uh, I, I hope I made some sense, um, but it was a, really a pleasure to talk to you. Well, thank you. Bye.